Thomas, I, I, I really like you. We know each other for a long, long, long time. Um, yesterday I told you, we, the first time we really met was, we were eating in a restaurant in California uh, at Dana Point. And it's, it's, it's a restaurant, it's, it's just above the harbor, into the rock. You can only eat fish. We ate nachos and I ate a salmon. I think it's already more than 10 years ago, maybe 15. That was a great experience together with some friends and family from you, also from Denmark. Uh, it's great to have you. Uh, you are from Copenhagen. Uh, you have a lovely wife. Um, you have three daughters. He's 43 and his daughters have just grown up. I'm 40, I'm just little children. So you're a quick starter, yeah. You love life and you love church and you love Jesus, you love the family, you love Denmark, but now you love Holland better. I think so, yeah. Have my applause. It's, um, it's great to, uh, to have you over and you have a great message uh, for us and uh, just fill us with everything you have and let's have a stand applause, give it, Wow, thank you, thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> so good to be back in Holland. I love this church and congrats on the new screen. <laughs> really awesome. So hey, I was actually at Dana Point this week <laughs> in California with the sun and uh, very nice weather. So I guess when you have a summer like this in Europe, you have to go elsewhere to have a little sun. I don't know what it's been like here in Holland, but in Denmark, we basically only had, I think it was three or four days of summer where the temperature was above 25 degrees. Isn't that awful? We, we didn't have one single day of what they call bathing weather where the water temperature is above 19 degrees celsius that's just crazy stuff right there so uh yeah i love i love church i love uh, uh, preaching at churches around the world and god has given me the awesome privilege of uh, ministering many places but this is by far one of my favorite places to come and I, I, I love your pastors. I meet a lot of pastors around the world. And I can tell you that you have, you know, pastors that are top level, uh, really, really great people that love you, have a big heart for the city, for the lost people, not only here, but for all of Europe. So I really, really love that. Today, I want to just talk about how to receive from God, how to uh, receive miracles from Him. I've seen many amazing things over the last, uh, especially over the last 14 months. I've, I've seen amazing stuff that I'm going to talk about today. But I would love for us to go to Scripture today, to Mark's Gospel and Chapter 10. So if you have your Bibles with you, if you have a, a smartphone uh, or uh, a Samsung or some other uh, phones than an iPhone that is a smartphone. I don't know if, if you have another Galaxy or, or Nokia or whatever, whatever device you use to read your Bible, we will go to the Gospel of Mark chapter 10. And here we have the story of a blind person, Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus was sitting by the gate and begging every day. He, he was begging for, for, for money to survive. He had been given a cloak that would give him permission to beg. So, so this guy uh, made his living by begging other people for money. And uh, one day Jesus was in the city and he was walking uh, past this blind person. And this blind person, it says in chapter 10 and verse 46, it says, Then they came to Jericho, as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth, he began that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I believe if you want to receive anything from God, the first thing you need to have is hope. You need to receive new hope. Uh, I don't know how many of you have ever uh, uh, been in a situation where all hope seems to be gone. That is 
a terrible place to find yourself in. So, but, but this person, he had hope. He believed that Jesus can do something about my situation. For you to receive from God also this morning, you have to receive new hope. You have to believe that God can do something for you. So this guy, he believed that Jesus could change his situation. And he took a decision. He said to himself, I'm not just going to sit on the sideline anymore and just uh, do nothing. But I'm going to step out of the comfort zone where I have been living. And I'm going to step into something new. This guy was blind and had been sitting by the side of the road for years and years and years. But he received new hope and he believed that Jesus could change his life. When I travel, I meet a lot of people. I meet a lot of pastors and uh, especially Albania. God has put Albania on my heart. It's, it's just one of the most corrupt and crime-filled nations in the world. And, and what I see in Albania, in Europe, is people live without hope. And even when you talk with the people there, even some of the pastors, they say, ah, there's no hope for my generation, not even my kids. Maybe my grandkids can have a better life. You know, that is terrible. If you live without hope, it's terrible. But Jesus can give you new hope. That's why every time I go into Albania, I preach about hope. That we have a hope that is an, like an anger. One of the writers says, an anger that goes into the holies of holies in heaven. That is forever grounded in heaven. So we have a hope. You have a hope. You don't have to be hopeless. Even though you have lived with a sickness or a disease or a situation, a circumstance in your life for years and years and years, you don't have to be stuck in that situation. But today, God can change your life. God can change your situation. You can believe that Jesus can do something about your life. And this guy, Bartimaeus, let's just call him Bard. Not Bart Simpson, just Bart. And Bart, he decided to himself, you know, I'm not just going to sit on the sideline anymore. He, this guy had a lot of obstacles. He was, first of all, he was blind. He couldn't see. He had had a limitation on his life. It meant that people had to help him. People had to, to uh, take care of him and, and, and so, so he wouldn't stumble and fall. But, but this guy, even though he was blind... That he could do something. And I believe you can do something. No matter what situation you're in, there is always something you can do. And the text says here in verse 47 that he was sitting by the roadside and he heard that Jesus was passing by. First of all, I want to notice that this guy knew about Jesus. Because when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he knew that this guy, he can do something about my situation. So this person may have been blind. He may have been limited, but there was something he could do. He knew about Jesus. He used what he had. And, 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 he, and he knew about Jesus, and that brought hope into his life. He, you may have a lot of limitations on your life, but there is always something that you have that you can use. And God will never ask you to use something that you don't have. And even though this guy was limited by a lot of circumstances, he was blind, but he could hear. And he knew. So <laughs> this guy could hear. His eyesight was gone, but his ears were still there. And he heard that Jesus was passing by. He used what God had given him. He did not just sit on the sideline and said, hey, I'm limited. I cannot really do anything. But he knew, he used his thought, he used his ears. And I'm glad that the devil didn't take both his eyes and ears because the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 that faith comes by hearing. <laughs> so this guy, he could think, he could hear, but he could also do something else. And it says in verse 47, that when he heard Jesus was coming, he began to shout. So he could think, 
He could hear and he could shout. He did not just sit back and say, hey, I cannot see, I'm limited, I cannot do anything. But he used what God had already given him. So he decided just to use what God has given him. And, and, and Jesus passed by and uh, something happened in this person's situation. The second thing that you need uh, in your life to receive a miracle from God, to receive anything from God, is you have to expect resistance. I'm preaching to myself as much as I'm preaching to you today. This is a message of my life as well, because when you do anything new in your life, you, will, you can expect resistance, because not everybody is going to be happy about you stepping in to something new. So you have to expect resistance when you do something new, but you also have to ignore Ignore the negative voices. <laughs> I love what we talked about yesterday. This evangelist in, in Africa, Reinhard Bunge, was asked at a conference, so what do you do about all uh, the negative uh, voices? Uh, I, you have to correct me if I get this quote wrong. But uh, basically, Reinhard says, if people say anything good about me and my ministry, it does not really do anything for me. And if they say something negative, it does not really do anything for me. So we just have to keep going with what we are doing. We have to expect resistance when we step into something new, but we also have to ignore the negative voices. And let me just pause there. Sometimes uh, all the voices are not uh, negative. <laughs> if people are correcting you, sometimes it's not because they're wrong. Sometimes they can be right, but, but you have to use your judgment. Is this person... Uh, uh, something uh, has this person walked with the Lord a long time do I, do, I ha do I need to listen to this voice of experience not all voices are negative I'm just saying uh, but you have to expect some kind of resistance when you step in to something new and it says in verse 48 many rebuked him and told him be quiet but he shouted all the more. I love this but. <laughs> but he shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Even though people were resisting this guy, he kept going. He kept pushing through. He kept walking through all the obstacles. And, 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 and I love that, that this guy, he just knew within himself that if I get to this Jesus, he can do something about my situation. A lot of Christians, they are, they are more relaxed and they are like, oh, I, I was like this some years back. I think even when we met, I was like, oh, God, God can meet me here. God can meet me here. I don't have to go over there. You know, I'm just sitting here and, and God is the same here as he is over there. Is that right? Yeah, it is. So we, we just sit back and say, oh, waiting here for you with our hands lifted high. Do you know that song? <laughs> I, I hate that song. <laughs> because if we just sit back and wait, a lot of times, God wants us to move. And the text says that Jesus was passing by. Jesus was not coming to this blind man. Jesus was walking to another situation, to another thing. So even though Jesus may not come to you in your circumstance and in your situation, he's always near. He's always passing by. And sometimes we have to step out of the comfortable and go into something new to come to Jesus, to receive from Jesus. And there will be a lot of people that will not understand if you step into something new. If, if you take, uh, even when you planted this ICF church, I don't know the whole story, but I bet that, that there must have been some resistance. Uh, if you... Uh, went to another church and you moved here, uh, a lot of people have said, ah, wh why do you do that? But sometimes you just know that you know that you know that God is passing by. And you need to move to come over 
and, 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 and receive from him. So this guy, even though he was blind, he used what God has given him. He, he could think, he could hear, he could shout, and he could move. So he started to shout, and he started to get, uh, try to get God's attention. So the third thing you, net, you have to do if you want to receive from God is that you listen for his call. So sometimes we have to be quiet. I don't like it. But, but sometimes we have to quiet down to hear the voice of God. So Jesus, he stopped in verse 49. And he said, call him. So they called to the blind man. Who are they? Who are they that called to the blind man? These were the same people that just a moment ago were saying, shh, be quiet. You're making a fool of yourself. Stop calling to Jesus. You, you have to be quiet. Jesus is, does not care about you. Just stay in your situation. But the same people that were rebuking him, that was talking down to him, that said, be quiet. Jesus does not care about you. Jesus stopped and he asked them. The people that just were negative, <laughs> that just were the people holding him down a moment ago, the same people, they called for him. <laughs> so Jesus used the same people that, that a moment ago were negative, were rebuking. He used them to call the blind man. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, up on your feet. Jesus is calling you. Then I love verse 50. It says, Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. So even though this person was blind and was limited and had all these obstacles in his life, the moment he heard the voice of Jesus calling to him, he left security behind. The cloak, the coat was a symbol that beggars were given that gave them permission to make an income begging. So the cloak for him was his income stream. So basically him throwing his cloak aside, jumping up and going to Jesus. That was actually him throwing away his security, throwing away his comfort, throwing away all the things that before gave him uh, 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 everything he needed in life, the financial uh, stuff and so on. So he threw his cloak aside. And today, my friend, I want to tell you that Jesus is calling also this morning. And every person in this room is called by him. You have to listen and you can hear his voice. You can hear him calling you also this day. But you have to make a decision also this day that, that, that you let go of the things that comforted you before. The things that were holding you back before sometimes it's it's safe to stay in the environment that you are in we talked about this last night as well so i'm preaching to myself this morning as well sometimes you have to throw away what before gave you the comfort it's very difficult to get rid of what is very comfortable i even have to put the microphone down But you have to get rid of the one thing before you can step into the new thing. But what we like to do is just try for a season to get halfway in. So we take the cloak off halfway and we say, okay, God, I, I want to step into this new thing you're calling me to. I, I, I want to listen to your voice and follow you and, and leave what gave me comfort and security before. But you know what? You cannot receive from God if you are holding on to what you used to have. You have to get all the way out of what gave you comfort before, even though it's difficult ah, to leave what gave you comfort before. Oh, it's tough. It's so tough. I cannot really put behind what gave me comfort before. And now I'm stepping on my white jacket. <laughs> but sometimes you have to let go of what gave you security. 
for you to be ready to step into the new thing that God is calling you to step into. So how do you receive from God? First of all, you receive new hope. Second of all, you, um, uh, you, list, you expect resistance. You expect that, of course, there will be trouble before you step into it. And third of all, you listen to the voice of God. You have to not just get halfway in to the new thing, but if God is calling you, you have to fully depend on him. You cannot go halfway when it comes to God. You have to put all your trust in him. Even though this gave me security for years and years, this was my income. This was where I, I, I had security and warmth through the long night. I have to talk a little to my coat because, thank you, coat. For years you have given me income. For years you have kept me warm during the long cold nights. I want to thank you for all the things you have done for me, Code. But there is something greater calling me. There is something new calling me. There is something greater calling me. I know that you gave me comfort, but I can hear something greater is calling me. So I want to step out of the comfortable and step in to this new thing that God is calling me. It's a very difficult thing to do, but each and every one is called to follow God in that way. So this guy, he dropped the coat and he ran to Jesus. He was still blind. <laughs> he was still blind, but he threw the cloak down and he was just following Jesus. He, he jumped up and he, and he went to where Jesus was, but he was still blind. Jesus, call me again. I cannot see you, but I can hear you. Jesus, call me again. I'm still blind. I cannot see you, but I can hear you. Sometimes you may not see the hand of God in your life. Sometimes you may not see, you know, the way that God is placed in front of you. But if you listen, you can always hear him. You can always hear his voice. You can hear the voice calling you. So we... We, we use what God has given us and we follow him. And I like what Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 says. We walk by faith and not by sight. So we may not see the whole way, but sometimes we have to take this step of faith. We have to walk by faith and not by sight. So this guy received new hope. He Expected resistance. He listened to the voice of God. And then, number four, he set goals. He set goals for his life. He told God exactly what he wanted. We have to tell God what we want. You have to tell God. Put into words, what do you need from God? What do you want from God? If, if you don't put it into words, how will you ever know when God is answering you? So write it down. Set goals Tell God, what do you want from him? In verse 51 it says, and this is Jesus saying, what do you want me to do for you? <laughs> it's quite obvious, isn't it? <laughs> this guy had just walked, thrown his cloak away and he was walking <laughs> towards Jesus. You know, and Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? It, it should be quite obvious, right? <laughs> I'm blind, I, I, I need to see. But, but, when God asks you a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. He knows the answer already. But you have to verbalize. You have to put into word, what do you want from God? What do you need from God? Put what's in your heart, the desires of your heart. Put it into words. And then the blind man says, Rabbi, I want to see. And then I love what happens because, and also the fifth thing that you can do is that you receive in faith. So he set goals, he asked God what he wanted, and then the fifth thing he received in faith. In verse 52 it says, go, your faith has healed you. So go, your faith has healed you. Uh, Jesus didn't pray for this guy. Did you notice that? He just said, hey, your faith has already made you whole. In, in chapter 8 of Mark, just two chapters before, there was a blind person. <laughs> Jesus uh, took him outside the city. This person was blind, and Jesus started to 
He spat him in the eyes. <laughs> and he said, go and wash and you will be healed. <laughs> okay, Jesus was uh, a bit unusual. If you come for prayer today, uh, I, 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 I know perhaps the front row has already received some blessing. <laughs> but Jesus was not always this nice guy. Sometimes he did some strange things. But this guy, he didn't spit on him. Uh, he just said, hey, your faith has already made, made you whole. So this guy was healed. And I don't know if you've ever seen a blind person healed. Have you seen a blind person healed? I've seen, yes, come on. I've seen uh, 14, I think the, the count is up to, 14 blind people healed over the last, uh, um, yeah, over the last year. And I was in Tanzania in, in May, and I told my wife, hey, I need to film when these miracles happen. So I put a GoPro camera on my chest. I also had one on my head, but my wife said, hey, you look stupid. Um, <laughs> I, and I resisted that negative voice. <laughs> no, sometimes negative voices are cl quite clever, and when it's my wife, I know I need to listen. So I only had the GoPro camera here. So, but anyways, this uh, person, blind person, was healed. And uh, uh, I filmed it in, in HD. You can see the eyes are like marble balls. Uh, the first person I, I saw healed that was blind, I think it's maybe one year ago. Uh, I don't know if I told about this when I was here the last time. Did, did I? The, the witch doctor? No? Did I tell you? Okay, great. I won't tell you again then. Just very short. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I, I will tell you again. But... <laughs> Uh, uh, we were praying for the first blind person I've ever seen. His pupils were gray. Normally they're black, but they're, they were gray. So we were praying for him. Suddenly they change color and they become black. And this person screams, I can see, I can see. So uh, we were just, what? <laughs> you can see, you can see. So we were just excited. And I turn around and this, this lady, this woman walks towards me like. Rrr. She looks really mean and her arms are hidden away. So I cannot see her arms, but she looks really, really weird. But what I can see is that her right eye is totally white. So I just think, hey, what God just did for this man, he can do for this lady. So I put my hand on her head, and I prayed for her. And I, when I moved my hand away, there was two brown eyes looking back at me. So she was completely healed. Next day, she gives her testimony saying, that she was a witch doctor, she had a knife with her, came to kill me, and sometimes she would take and eat something from the, from the victims that she killed. I was just like, uh, uh, I'm pretty happy that I didn't know that she had a knife and she wanted to kill me, or else, you know, my, my arms were longer than hers, so I, I could <laughs> But anyways, she was healed and she gave her life to Christ. And uh, while she's standing there just filled with guilt and, and uh, over the life she's living, people started to shout, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. We love you. So anyways, when I came back to Africa, I wanted to film. Uh, and this, uh, this girl that I prayed for uh, was healed. And uh, I, I could not find her. So uh, I, I asked the team, can you find a girl? She has a blue sweater on. And uh, I think God healed her. But my driver was saying, hey, you're going to miss your flight. You're going to miss your flight. You're going to miss your flight. So I asked the people, hey, this blind person was healed. Can you find her for me? And nobody could find her. So uh, then I asked one worker, can you find this blind person? And she came with 10 blind people. And I was like, uh, it's none of them. And uh, she said, can you pray for them? Uh, I said, uh, and the driver said, you're going to miss your flight? And I thought... I can walk away because they cannot really see me. So, <laughs> but anyways, I, I prayed for them, and then and then uh, we we drove six hours with the two uh, police officers on the back seat with bulletproof vests and AK-47s, and uh, they they hadn't been in a bath for two months. <laughs> I was just with the head out the window the whole way, <sighs> trying to get air. But then, then I flew eight hours, so 14 hours, uh, and I landed in Istanbul, and they sent me this video. Is this the girl you prayed for? 
And uh, this was the girl that I prayed for that was healed. You can see her eyes are like marble balls, and afterwards uh, she can see. So can you roll that video? Thank you. You can see her eyes have changed color. I'm trying to get the video in HD, the second one, uh, because uh, her eyes are brown. So they were like marble balls, then they were brown and she could see. Isn't it amazing? God still does miracles today. God still does amazing things today, and not just in Africa. We, we had 10,000 people come out, and about 1,875 people gave their life to Christ. And uh, the, the white guy you saw there is, is a Danish missionary in Tanzania uh, that I work with uh, when I'm there. So, so that was just awesome. And God does miracles today as well. Also here in uh, Holland. Where am I? Holland. <laughs> Can, can I get the keyboard player up here? Are oh, you already there? Come on. Wow. That's just, you, you run a tight ship. That's really, really good. Thank you. Last point, and then we're going to pray. Jesus says, go, your faith has healed you. So Jesus says to this man, you can go now. You are already healed. And this was a test from Jesus because did this man just want the healing from God? Or did he also want to follow Jesus? And, and the text says that he was given permission to just walk away with his healing. But it says immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Jesus has some immediately today for you. You may have been stuck in your situation or your circumstance or your sickness for years and years and years, but there's an immediately today that Jesus this day wants to heal you. He wants to touch you. He wants to set you free. But, but there's also a question today. Do you just want to receive the healing or do you want to receive the healer? Jesus is asking you today, hey, will you just receive whatever you need from me or will you also follow me? Some people are in church because they want something from God. And then the, when they have received that, they, they stop following him. But the question today is, do you follow Jesus in your life? Are you following Christ every day of your life? If not, today I want to challenge you to follow him. Follow him along the road like this person in the text he did. Can we pray together? <clears throat> And before we, I want to pray for, for everybody who is sick and have, uh, need a miracle in, in, your, in your body. But I also want to challenge you that do not know Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about uh, being a part of, uh, of, uh, of something. But I'm talking about knowing Jesus Christ. That he is your Lord and he's your Savior. You are following him every day of your life. If, if that's you, you're just feeling your heart is beating today and you want to respond and say, Jesus, I want to follow you. I don't know if you have backslidden away from him, but today he's calling you back and he says, follow me. So if that's you, if you have known Jesus, but you have fallen away from him or you have never received Jesus Christ in your heart as your personal Lord and Savior, then today is your day. Today you can receive the one that does the impossible, the one that does miracles. If that's you, my friend, if every eye closed and every head bowed, I just want to challenge you.
to say yes to him, I'm going to count down from three. And uh, I'm just going to challenge you to raise your hand and say, Thomas, I want to say yes to this Jesus. I want to follow him while every head is bowed and every eye is closed. I want to say yes to him this morning. Three, two, one. Just raise your hand so I can see it. Thank you. 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 Wonderful. Are there any more? Jesus. Thank you. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each raised hand. Right now, Father, I just pray that there will be a love explosion in their heart. Thank you, Lord, that that even they though they may have known you before but have backslidden away from from you i thank you that you now receive them into your arms again and father i pray for each person that have never known you right now father i just pray that you would would bless them bless them immensely father just just shower your love and your grace on them father thank you that they have found home now that they have found the heavenly father that you jesus christ would just explode in the innermost being father in your name we pray in your name we pray in your name we pray amen 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 if you today have received jesus uh, i know you have you have a team and afterwards come up and and talk with Ari, talk with some of some of the other team. We we don't want you to just be alone in your walk with Christ, but but follow uh, along the road with other disciples of Jesus, with other people that are following Him. That's by far the best. I also want to pray if we can stand up, and uh, we're just going to do this very simple. Um, last time I was here, uh, Kais, where are you? Oh, a case, case. I, he he got healed uh, in his back. He had a lot of morphine, uh, and uh, I did not even touch him. <laughs> I don't need to touch you for God to touch you. God can touch you right where you are. Uh, and uh, so, if you are sick today, uh, if a dear person in your family is sick, we saw a, a woman with cancer, like a tumor. Uh, got healed she was not even in the meeting but uh, one of her i think it was children you know just stood in her place and said we're going to believe for cancer to get healed right now so if one in your family a loved one is is sick you can also stand in their place and we believe that god can heal them so if you are sick in your body place your hand if it's appropriate where you're sick and then we're going to pray are you, are you up for that yes no Okay, <laughs> great. So just put your hand where, where you need healing, where you need prayer. So right now, Father, we just pray for each and every person in this room. We thank you that you have the power to heal. We thank you that you do not only touch people and heal people in, in Africa or in South America, but right here this morning in Holland, you have the power to heal. And right now, Father, I take authority over every sickness in this room and I command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for our loved ones that are not here this day. Thank you, Father, that we can stand in as a representative for them and we declare healing right now. We speak to cancer to go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that, that each and every person that has depression or has this uh, this cloud of darkness coming over their mind. Right now, we speak life, we speak light, and we, we just pray, Jesus, that, that, that you would just heal their mind right now, Father. We speak to every mental illness, and we command it to go right now in the name of Jesus, and we just speak healing, we speak deliverance in your wonderful name. Amen. 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 Yeah. What I want you to do now, uh, and this is, this is fun, if you had knee problems, you, you start to bend your knee. And uh, often that's when the healing occurs, when you do what you could not do before. So if you have back problems, you start to move around a little bit. And then that's when, when God starts to heal. So uh, I don't want to take <laughs> any more time, but, but I know that, that God is here this morning. So, so just receive from him in faith 
this morning. Receive new hope, even though you've been in a circumstance for years and years and years. God can do something in your life and in your circumstance. Amen. Amen. Amen.